afternoon, we're here to present our last project of industrial information systems. So Unified Modeling Language, UML, is a standardized modeling language consisting of an integrated set of diagrams developed to help system and software developers specifying, visualizing, constructing, and documenting the artifacts of software systems, as well as for business modeling and other non-software systems. Using UML helps project teams communicate, explore potential designs, and validate the architectural design of the software. UML tools developed by the company Caderno were a use case diagram, a class diagram, and a database structure diagram. Based on these diagrams, it was possible to generate forms in Microsoft Access that allowed an, an enabled representation and management of the company's data. A use case diagram, at its simplest, is a representation of a user's interaction with the system that shows the relationship between the user and the different use cases in which the user is involved. It represents a very suitable tool for the description of the system making use of the identifica identification and specification of system, system requirements. Therefore, it was identified five actors that are connected through systems activities as shown. Our actors are the customer, the CTT, the bank, the sales team, and finally, the production team. The use case diagram presented on the figure, figure was elaborated based on the DPMNs previously displayed in assignment two. We can now visualize better the action taken, for example, by the customer and their relationship with the rest of the company's process. The actor customer enters Caderno website page and can start to browse throughout the, the website. The client may then check the personalization option offered by the company and can choose between personalizing any of the products or not. After this, the customer may select the desire, desired products, which are easily directed directly connected with the checkout. Every time a customer concludes the checkout process, he must proceed to the payment of the desired items. If the payment is completed, there is a connection with the sales team where these actors may initiate the process needed to fulfill the order just made by the customer. To complete the payment, there is another connection to the bank processing where the payment authentication happens and the payment is then received. Uh, this connection, as it is based on the confirmation of the payment, has effect before the connection of the payment with the sales team, even though it is an instant process. Finally, the customer receives the order from the CTT actor and an evaluation can be taken by the, the, the client. Uh, in case the client turns out not to be satisfied with the company service or quality of the product, there is a direct connection again with the sales team that are also responsible to understand and make amends with the, any customer complaints. A class diagram models the static structure of a system. It shows relationships between classes, objects, attributes, and operations. A class diagram is used for modeling the system of an application and for translating the model into programming code. Some benefits of using this type of diagram include the fact that it illustrates data models for information systems, no matter how simple or complex, providing better understanding of the general overview of the schematics of an application, while visually expressing any specific needs of a system and disseminating information throughout the business. Taking all of this into account, Caderno developed the following class diagram, representing the interactions involved in the process of having the raw material delivered manufacturing the notebooks and having them explored and or bought by the client through the website. This is Caderno's class diagram. Relationships in class diagrams include different types of logical connections. Uh, for our company, the relationship between the supplier that delivers the raw material is of dependency because making changes of the def to the definition to, of the supplier class implies changes to the raw material class. As raw materials integrate the product, there's a relationship of aggrega aggregation between them, as the second one is formed after combining a set of ob objects from the first one. The cardinality in the diagram helps in understanding how many objects of each class take part in the relationship. This means that one supplier must deliver at least one raw material, but can deliver many, and one raw material 
has to be delivered by at least one supplier, but it can be delivered by many. For example, um, one credit card needs to have one on owner, the client as a minimum, because its existence requires its belonging to someone, and as a maximum, the cre credit card can only belong to one person. A database is a collection of information that is organized so that it can be easily accessed, managed, and updated. Nearly all e-commerce businesses nowadays use databases to store product inventory, customer information, supplier information, and others. This is Caderno's database structure diagram. Before I go into more detail about the diagram itself, there are a few concepts that need to be explained, such as an entity is an object that exists. For example, in this diagram, the client corresponds to an entity. An attribute defines the, inf defines the information of an entity that needs to be stored. For example, the attributes regarding the client are his ID number, his name, his address, his email, and his telephone number. In bold are represented the primary keys. These correspond to the attributes that uniquely identify each tuple of a table. A foreign key is a set of one or more columns in a table that refers to the primary key in another table. For example, ID client is a foreign key in the table credit card. Now I will proceed to explain in further detail the diagram. Caderno is a company that sells notebooks. Each one has a different ID number that identifies it, a selling price, and each one is composed of different raw materials, which also have an ID number and a price. Every time Caderno needs to produce more notebooks, an order is placed to a supplier. Each supplier has a different ID number, an address, and a name. Each order is characterized by the quantity wanted of each raw material, the supplier it was made to, the date of the order, and the state of the order order, which can either be confirmed, processing, or delivered. Each client makes a purchase. Each purchase is characterized by the product bought, the quantity purchased, the date, and the state of the purchase. Again, confirmed, processing, or delivered. The client is characterized by its ID number, name, address, email, and telephone number. The payment is done using a credit card, which is characterized characterized by the name of the owner, the credit card number, and the expiration date. It is also associated with the client that made the purchase. Every payment has an ID number that uniquely identifies it. As said in the start of this presentation, we used Microsoft Access to computerize the database structure diagram previously developed. Access is a platform which contains tools that enable the creation of a database application, including tables, data input forms, queries, and reports. So now we're going to explore the program a little bit more so you can see how we work with it. So first we created our tables with the info from the database diagram in the creates um, separator with the table function. And in each tables column, there's the corresponding attribute and we filled out each table with the corresponding information for example about our clients or their credit card information our products suppliers and so on after creating the tables we went to the database to uh, separator and used the functionality relationships and this allowed us to establish the different relationships between the tables according to the foreign keys of each one and the result is pretty much similar to a data, the database diagram shown before. Then we moved on to the creating the queries, uh, which are basically a request for data or information from the database tables. So you go to the create separator and choose query design. We chose to have the name of the product, the state, uh, the purchase state, the client's name and their credit card number. And the criteria field was, the, the criteria we, we chose was the delivered state of purchase. And this allowed us to see which product and their, the name of the product was delivered to which client and their credit card number. And this is really useful, for example, in situations of returns or refunds. Lastly, but not least, we created forms that are like a window that contains several fields to enter data, and they're just more user-friendly to consult information than tables. 
So we go to the create separator again and select the form wizard. And, and then what we're going to get is something like, for example, this one. This is a form regarding the client. And um, it's, it's really, you can uh, structure it to, to your liking and you can move the fields around. If you go here, you can just change the colors, whatever you want. Um, and here in forms, you can actually create new fields in the tables because they're connected, but without going to the original table. For example, in here, if I, in here in the product, if I want to create a new product, but I don't want to go to the table, I'm just going to give it a name and a new price, for example. And that's it. Then I go to the products table and it's already here. Uh, you can still add other tables fields, which we did in the orders form, for example, because we had uh, just the orders tables uh, information, but we chose to add also the name of the supplier and the name and price of the raw material. So we could use, it could be more user friendly and easier to create a new order using the form because just using this, the ID, maybe uh, we wouldn't know which supplier we were talking about or which raw material we were talking about. And that's it. That's our Microsoft Access, which of course we can always further develop according to our necessities. This assignment allowed us to develop our databases after having created a website. In order to create a solid database, we started by representing the relationship between the user and the different use cases in which the user is involved, a use case diagram. Then, we analyzed the relationship between classes, objects, attributes and operations, which allowed us to model the static structure of the system, a class diagram. And finally, it was possible to create a database to enable the creation of a database application via Microsoft Access. Overall, there were a lot of positive aspects, such as easy to install and very intuitive, various YouTube tutorials, uh, quick access to information, especially using queries, very complete and resourceful, ability to store large amounts of information and inexpensive. We still identified some disadvantages, such as designing a more complex database requires a lot of time and it was not available for EOS. Taking them all into account, we still considered it a very complete and resourceful platform that allowed us to computerize the database structure diagram previously presented. To summarize, we can state that our business is now stronger and better structured since building a good database makes for a solid foundation of any company, especially one like our own that runs an online business. Thank you so much for your time. If you have any questions, let us know.